So welcome to Leaving a Legacy. I'm so glad you're here because there's different reasons for writing books, and I have a couple different formulas. Lisa, don't get mad at me. <laughs> I gave her the hardest one. <laughs> and the biggest problem, I think, and what I've heard from uh, what you have said is mindset. And it's so easy. So Donna, I heard you use the word need. Everyone says I need to. And I really don't like need because I feel like uh, people don't get to tell us what we need to do. Mm -hmm. But if we want to do it, and if we have a passion about it, and even if we don't, maybe it's because we are telling ourselves stories of who's going to listen. Uh, I also do a podcast uh, class, and that's what everyone says. Well, who wants to listen? Who cares? Do it. <laughs> and also, we want to leave a legacy for our kids. And what I loved about my book coach is when, first of all, is the key beliefs that we have. What we think about when we go to sleep, you probably all know this, is what we dream about and how we sleep. So when we go to sleep, we want to go to sleep with some big influence. So a, so a lot of us, like when I say a lot of us, I mean me, might play a little video game before we go to sleep. So then we dream of Mario Brothers, you know. So what we what we go to sleep with is important. And when you're writing a book, it's it's important to keep your mindset right because that's where we fall off the track. That's where people quit is when we don't keep that mindset of, I feel called to do this, right? We wouldn't be doing this. People that don't, don't feel called, they're like, I'm never writing a book. Why would I do that? So the fact <laughs> that you're here tells me that you have a passion or you have a calling to do this. And so um, until those limiting beliefs change, we're going to keep getting stuck. So that's why I'm starting on this with limiting. So what, what I want to do is open it up just real quick and tell me if you have if there's something that you've been telling yourself that would be a limiting belief of how come not yet or, or, or how come you're stuck. So um, go ahead, whoever wants to go, tell me what has been keeping you stuck. Lisa? I don't know, I don't know how to do it. Okay. Good one. So here's, here's the truth, Lisa. You do, but you're overthinking it. You have a formula that works. So, but see, that's that mindset. You're telling yourself, I don't know how. So this is something I learned from my coach. Uh, and she learned it from her coach, is that you say 100 times a day out loud, I can do it. I can do it. It doesn't take very long. In fact, I live about a mile from the coffee shop I meet clients in. I can say it 100 times before I get to the coffee shop. So you're changing by saying it out loud. Your brain starts to believe you. So thank you for sharing, Lisa, and thanks for being honest. Winona? Um, I don't, I need to make time to do it. Mm -hmm. right? okay, so I need to sit still long enough to do it. And I'm sitting still long enough now, right? You are, but you're driving, right? No, I'm sitting in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so can we change one little word in that? The word need? So if you said it differently, how would you say it? I will take time to do this. You will. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And what will that take for you to take time? Well, like this morning, I got up early because I flew to Vegas last night. So I'm running on four hours of sleep and I made a commitment to be here. That was spontaneous. So I said, I will get up this morning because I'm alone. So I have that space and I will do some work. And I did. I woke up at seven and I got everything done that I needed to do. I kept my part of my commitment. And now I'm here at breakfast with my friends, so I left them in the restaurant so I can come and do this because <laughs> this is my commitment. <laughs> thank you. Nice work. No, thank you. Who else? I have one. Okay. I'll do it when the round to it comes around, but the round to it never comes around. <laughs> <laughs> I never get around to it. Where, I think, where do we find this round to it? Where is it? <laughs> I know. It just rolls right by. I, I think what the biggest thing is in my mind, I think what it means to write a book is you sit down and you spend two or three days just writing. That's all you're doing, focusing on that writing, 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 writing. But in reality, 
its little bits and pieces and just, you know, just like jotting down little notes, like um, God's been kind of speaking to me about this when he talks to me is um, sometimes if I don't uh, make a recording, a voice recording of a thought that comes in my mind, because it can at any time during the day, something may pop in my head. And if I don't take that moment to just record it, then, you know, when I say, oh, I'll, I'll do it here in a little bit, the, well, the round to it never comes around. I never get that little bit to do it. And so I'm trying to be more purposeful in when a thought or idea comes into my mind that um, I, I record it somehow, whether it's on paper and, or whether it's on my voice recorder on my phone or whatever. Um, so, but then you got to take it the next step further and actually carve out some time to sit down and compile it together. So three things. One is that's what you think. Yes. You've made a decision. You've told yourself a story about that's the way it works. So mm -hmm. my hope is it's that you'll all cold. stay open. That may, I know so often I get on calls and I'm like, I know that I already know this. And so I've made a commitment to just be open-minded to hear, you know, what's there. There might be something I don't know, even though I think I know, you know, I get caught in that because I'm a coach and I'm like, well, I know what this is all about. And number two is tr you said you're trying. So no more trying. We're doing. I am. I am recording. And number three is once you record, you don't have to transcribe. Fiverr can do that for you. Some computers can do that for you. Whatever it is you don't want to do, you don't have to do. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Tracy. Donna? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to start or where to start. And then I remember, because I've always loved writing, you know, when like in, uh, uh, especially junior high. And then I remember getting my paper back that was all marked in red. It's like, you're using the passive voice. And this is a dangling participle. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I just want to write. And so it's thinking about doing something on a professional level, or even if it's just like you said, just something for my own children. It's like, am I speaking in the passive voice? Is this, is this a verb filler? You know, all these different technicalities of linking the words together. I'm so glad you said that because you know what? You don't have to worry about any of that because you are going to get an editor. You just get to write. You don't have to think about punctuation. And seriously, if my editor was on here, he would tell you I end probably 95% of my sentences with an exclamation mark. So you don't, Jen can tell you because she read through my book. So uh, Marva, how about you? There you go. Hi, Marva. Hi. Hi guys. Um, for me, it would be, how would I get it published? Oh, okay. Good. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. Okay. You don't even need to worry about that anymore. How awesome is that? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you all for sharing. And I love it because we're going to tell ourselves a different story. Number one, I can, I can do it. And you can, if I can do it, you can do it. I am not a writer. I'm an author, but I'm not a writer. And thank goodness for awesome editors. By the end of this class, you will have a list of editors. You will have a list of graphic artists because you want to hire someone to do your graphic art, which Tracy, wave. Tracy's a graphic artist. She's the one who did my legacy picture. Did you all see that? Uh, so she is very capable of doing graphics for podcasts, for books, for your Facebook page. So you'll get a list of graphic people who do graphics. You'll get a list of different ways you can publish. You will get, um, uh, of course, support from each other. Now I'm going to start a Facebook group for us. So now that you all know each other, you can go in and you can chat with one another. So the biggest thing is that we worry about Number one, if I can do it, and all these stories we've told ourselves. Number two, what are others going to think, right? Yeah. And I remember when I got into radio, I was a shy kid in high school. And when people found out I was going to get in radio, they're like, 
I mean, I worked at a grocery store and they go, hey, are you in radio yet? Because I'd come back to visit Whidbey Island. And I'm like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm on the morning show on KCIQ, it's KDIQ, but it was KCNS, it was KDIQ back then. They're like, oh, so this is something <laughs> you can do. And so we're telling ourselves a different story. Also, think of the people in your inner circle that are for you. Okay, sometimes it's not your family member because they're for you, but they want to discourage you because they love you and they don't want you to make an idiot out of yourself. They don't want you to be embarrassed, right? So find your inner circle, your cheerleaders. That's the only people you're going to tell until you get your confidence that I'm writing a book. Then you can move to the outer circle of the people you love and you may have to convince a little. The third outer circle, don't even worry about them. And the, the truth is, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It only matters what you're called to write. That's what being an activist is all about. We mm -hmm. do what we're called to do regardless. And you have your people that are your, in, look at she's in Costa Rica showing off her view there. <laughs> I love it. I tried to do the, the virtual background. It didn't work for my computer. So most of the stories we tell ourselves are lies. Isn't that the truth? Most of the stories. So um, one of the stories we tell ourselves is, oh, I don't want to make any money. I just want to write a book. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? Right? So no, I'm in it for the money, honey. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And then um, here, here's a big lie that we have all grown up with. I can almost guarantee it. I have to work hard for my money. This is going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be ugly. Marva, that's why I love you so much. You kick those, those thoughts in the butt. So does Jen. Her and her husband have uh, called me out many times. In fact, Jen and I love to play this game. <gasps> we'll, we'll play it at the end, okay? I got to keep an eye on time because I don't want to run out of time. Okay. So, let's see. Okay. I, I, wanna, I don't want to go on and on about mindset because I think you guys get it. So, we do have a mental asset. We, we think we believe something that we don't really believe. Like, I'm going to make money, but deep down, because uh -uh. it's so set in us. And that's why we want to change those limiting beliefs. So, what we say is what we know and that we're on the exact same page with that. So what if it's easier to make a lot of money in a short amount of time than a little over a long time? What if that's the truth? Wouldn't that be awesome? So these are things you can begin to tell yourself. Um, also, I've always wanted to start a nonprofit, but there's no money. You know what? Go make money. Then start your nonprofit. Go make money, write a book, do a podcast, which if you all stay on this call till the end, the fourth week, you get a link and $30 off the podcast class if you're interested in it. So mindset's the most important first step. So before we go on, let's open up. Anybody have anything that you want to say about any of this so far? Yeah. Yeah. My concern is, do I want to open up myself and be transparent? And that is what I've been um, faced with the past week. Because you see, I stopped the podcasting because um, it's time for me to be transparent and tell everything. And, I, and I'm ready to tell it, but then I get this block. So that's why I'm interested in doing this class, because I think I'm just going to do it. You said something. Don't worry about what other people think. Right. And exactly. I don't know if it's what other people think or is it what I'm afraid of. So what do you think? You know, deep down, you know, I, I think I think that I'm in fear of like just being that trans. I already believe I'm transparent, but this is going to be a, a different level of transparency. So. And what might happen when you get really transparent? Well, the well, you know, people get to know me at a deeper level. They know my struggles. Um, some people might cheer me on. Some pe I'm, I'm probably more afraid of being judged. 
but I've already been judged. So, <laughs> so that's why I'm ready to let let it all go. You know, I'm really really ready to do this. It's it's it's, it's um right here on my gut. Do you guys believe her? Is she ready? Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. You, Winona, I just you knew. Say, go ahead. Could I just say something? Is Winona, people need your transparency because your transparency opens the door for them to be transparent and to face things in their own personal life that mm -hmm. they need to deal with. So don't shrink back from that because people need that. And along with that, is you have given that to people. She's a recovery coach and mm, you have awesome. modeled that. And so this is going to be your chance. I'm ready. I'm ready. And when you get fearful, you think about all these faces here that already think you're awesome. And we know you have lots of people who think you're awesome. But you. I'm ready. I can't wait. I've heard her podcast. I can't, every story she tells, I'm like, ah, oh. so I'm ready. Winona. Awesome. Anybody else? So I, limiting Go ahead. Lisa. Yeah, I kind of agree with her a little bit too about the vulnerability. And I think, you know what, people might disagree with what I say. They, you know, I might get rejection or whatever, but at what point am I going to just be willing to be okay with that? Because yeah. I just think no matter what you do, somebody's not going to like it. Oh, yeah. And that's why in my mind I can say it doesn't matter what other people think, but somewhere inside it sort of does. And so I guess I'm trying to get my mind wrapped around yeah, somebody might not like it. Yeah, somebody might not disagree. And it's okay anyway, because God's given me a job. And who am I going to serve? Who am I going to listen to? But I think that people pleasing is really difficult, at least for me. Yeah. I think recognizing it is half the battle. Yeah. Donna, were you going to say something? No, it's just, yeah, I'm just... I'm, I'm agreeing with everything that's been said and just that initial inertia, just starting. And then, like I said, I, I've had so many stories knock around in my head and I, sometimes I journal them, but it's the, even knowing what to write and then how to start. Right. So thank you. Anybody else before we move on? Just that I agree with what she just said, yeah. because, and I don't know if it's a, if it's a subconscious way to, uh, sabotage myself that well maybe I'll write on this know this so I can't decide and I'm not sure yeah and anyway I'm not I'm not sure but maybe that's just a sabotage yeah I love that about Lisa because she always <laughs> recognizes that <laughs> she's like oh wait I know what that is uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to some of you already have the first phase of the formula but I'm going to give you the first phase and then we're going to do an activity to close on and then today I will get the group set up so that you can talk, ask questions, whatever, encourage one another. So, and remember, you don't know what this formula is. Some of you know the next steps, but it's easy to assume, oh, I know where this is going. Try to have an open mind because there's several different ways this can go. And I'll tell you what, I got this formula. I wrote my book. I think I wrote it in three weeks. Wow. Seriously, you know why? Because once I had the formula, I had actually already written it. All I had to do was pull up a bunch of stuff, add a few new things. And it, my editor actually took a long time, but that was, they were in crisis. So that's a different story. So the first step, and I would like you to all have this done by next week, if you haven't already, is I want you to write 18 to 24 things you want people to know. It's so funny. Somebody one of my clients said, about me? And I'm like, yeah, no, no. Just what you want them to know about life, about whatever you're in, recovery, graphics, uh, social work, Costa Rica, um, Colleen, whatever I want, you want people to know about the business. So 18 to 24 things you want people to know. And don't second guess it. Just do a brief sentence. 18 to 24 things you want people to know. Now, this might be a little hard. So, Jen, you know how this goes. So, you could maybe start typing in the chat and maybe I could read it. Um, we'll see if we can do that. Oh, 
guess what? Zoom just gave us a present. They they are no longer doing a 40 minute. You know, they're not going to kick you off in 40 minutes. But so I know how cool is that. So here's here's the the game. We call it the time machine. That's what I've been calling it, Jen. And uh, Jen and I call it Remember When. So I'm going to have each one of you open your mic. Marva has done this with me before. And you're going to be like back here and you're going to run into me. It's been five years. I haven't seen you for five years. You've already written your book. So I want you to tell me. I'm going to, you know, you're going to say, hey, Lori, and I'm going to say, oh, my gosh, it's been so long. What's going on? And you are going to tell me five years from now how your book's doing, what's going on. Think you can handle it? <laughs> Who's, Tracy, you go first. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> okay. Um, it's been so long. You must have your book by now. I just, I just drew blank when you said that. So remember how we, we talked about how we want to be debt-free and we want to just be able to freely travel, go visit the grandkids and do all the things that we dreamed of doing, having our girls time in Costa Rica. <laughs> so we'll go down and visit, is it Jennifer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but remember, I have actually been able to do that from going through and writing this book. It generated an extra stream of income. And then doing the podcast that you taught me how to do has another stream of income. And then all the work that I'm going to get from all of the writers and stuff. Whoops, I went to the present. How many clients uh, do you have now that you've done book covers for? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just all of those things added up. Those little things added up to make a big thing to help me get out of debt and to be able to have money set aside to be able to live the life I've wanted to live. So what's it like now? Right? Yeah, I love it. And you have I love it. It's freeing. Yeah. You know? I, I work when I want to work and do the things that I want to do. And I have time to sew into people's lives in many different ways. Wow. That is so, I'm so glad I ran into you. I'm glad I ran into you too, sister. <laughs> Who am I running into next? Winona? It's so good to see you, Lori. I've written my book and I just really? like to let you know, I got a lot of good reviews. Wow. I did, and I'm really shocked. Um, I'm working part time, doing what I've been my um, my what I call my retirement plan. My retirement plan is to have a hot dog stand and hang out where people want to buy hot dogs. So I've been doing that the past two years, and um, I'm excited about my life. My grandkids are growing up, and I'm getting to travel um, out of the country. Like that's been my dream. So I've been. It's really good to see you. How are you? Good. Now, are you doing any speaking? Because you're such a fabulous speaker. <laughs> well, I just booked my first speech. So I'll let you know how that goes. Awesome. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I'm going to come get a hot dog. Okay. <laughs> I'll drive to you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. She'll drive to me. Who's next? Who do I get I'll to go. you? Who is that? Colleen. Colleen, okay. Hi, okay. Colleen. Well, hey, Lori, good to run into you. I know. I wanted to let you know how successful your um, book class was, the Legacy of Class, and I'm so thankful that you did it. And now that it's been five years, I um, also took, well, at the same time, I took your podcasting class, oh. and um, I love that. And I've got my own podcasting channel now, wow. and I'm really excited about that. And it's been real successful, and I'm getting lots of guests on my podcasting channel. And um, I um, am making it's very successful. I'm doing seven figures, and I'm really, really happy with it. And I, it's all because of you. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited, and um, I'm able to travel now. All the restrictions are lifted, and the coronavirus is gone. And um, <laughs> Um, my mm -hmm. granddaughter now is, um, well, she was 12, so she's 17 now. Oh so we're actually able to travel in the summer when she's out of school. And um, life is really, really good. So I'm really excited. 
and um, I'm only working about 20 hours a week, so I've got lots of freedom, and um, life is really, really good. I'm, I owe it all to you. Thank you. Oh. Did you write two books? Okay. Yes, I wrote two books. I wrote one on um, business and one on ADD, ADHD, and they're both really successful. Oh my gosh, I'll have to tell you, I did read the ADHD one and it was fabulous. Oh wow, great. <laughs> I'll, I'll write you a review. <laughs> oh, that would be super. Thanks. So good to see you, Colleen. Who's next? I'll go next. Okay, Lisa. Hey, Lisa, good to see you, man. It's been what, five years? It has been. I can't believe it's been that long. And you helped me so much. You helped be the cheerleader to get me to write my first book, which has great reviews. And my intent was, my life has kind of been a struggle and writing to somebody that maybe the road would be easier for them. And just following the dreams that God's put in their heart. And I have been doing that thanks to you and the, the people in our group that have encouraged me. And it has great reviews. It even made the New York Times bestselling list. And I was even interviewed by Dobson. Wow. And really, my book really touched the hearts of the people listening. I knew just, it would. You have such a great story. I knew it would bless others. Well, just to touch the hearts of the of the people who don't believe in themselves and and put their dreams on the sideline instead of going for it. So that was encouraging. But also since then, I've also done my four year old granddaughter, who is now nine. I had an idea to do a children's book or a series, mm -hmm. the Kaya, the Adventures of Kaya series. And that's to try to talk about um, emotional intelligence and character traits while yet going into the adventures that only a little kid's imagination can capture. And that's been really successful as well. So like Tracy, I've also been able to get a place in Arizona where my two sisters have a place and enjoy the sunshine when it's crappy weather here. <laughs> yes, and also it's, it's been, I've been able to speak in a few different places and just like I say, encourage people because that's been my biggest thing is having all kinds of dreams and not knowing how to, to reach them. And I just don't think God's put dreams in our hearts for us to be frustrated. Yeah. I really believe he wants us to get to where we want to go and where yeah. he wants us to go. Yeah, I'm so, so excited for you. for you. Yeah, I have a friend who's a hospice nurse and she will tell you biggest regret they didn't do. They didn't live their dream. They were scared. They were worried about what people would say. It's a huge regret. So kudos to all of you for taking this step. Okay, who's next? Did you do it in the chat, Jen? Um, I, I think so, maybe. Oh, I can hear it now. Hey. Oh, I can hear it. So mm -hmm. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> are, are we still on? Yeah. Okay. Still, is, okay. Hear so, me? Can't okay. hear you again. Okay, what about... Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay, you go, girlfriend. Girl, remember when we were talking about writing that book and shit? I'm sorry. Oh, remember when we were writing about that? Uh, remember when we were talking about writing that book and things? You can say that word. <laughs> yeah. I've heard it before. <laughs> Girl, I went and uh, wrote that book finally, and uh, Oprah Winfrey came out of retirement to interview me about that book. Oh my that. God, that was your dream. Uh, it was a worldwide bestseller. Um, it made a uh, so-called chick lit part of the literary canon. Okay. <laughs> and set women free. Oh Remember my that? God. And then I bought a giant ranch and uh, all of y'all came and stayed with me and we partied up. And I, and I ate two hot dogs from uh, the other girl at the hot dog stand. Um, <laughs> I want two hot dogs. I yeah. love Oh, I love, I love no, it. For, but for real, what's on my heart to write is about recovery, but a different kind. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Laura, you know that I was raised in a very punitive fundamentalist sort of religion. And it's only been since I've been in Costa Rica and I, my life has been quiet. And I've been so privileged to just be a lady of leisure for such a long time. But that leisure time has really been fighting for my physical health and my mental health. And what I've figured out is how that very punitive binary mindset affected every aspect of my life, every aspect of how I think without even me knowing it. So I think I wanna tell that story like a recovering fundamentalist and the process of opening one's mind and opening one's heart. Oh, I love that so much. Isn't that so needed? Can I get an amen? I don't know. Man, I don't know if it's anybody else or if it was just me, but girl looking at the state of uh, United States today, I think there's a lot of fundamentalists out there that need a little heart opening up. That's so exciting. We had so many talks about this and now you're doing it. <laughs> From Costa Rica. Passwords. I mean, <laughs> give, give me a good editor or something. <laughs> a lot of cusses. <laughs> I don't think cussing sends you to hell. <laughs> <laughs> if it does, it's too late for me. <laughs> well, then I might actually. See you <laughs> I don't believe in hell anymore, so it's all good. <laughs> Thank you. So good to see you. So, Donna or Marva? Oh, I can't hear you, Marva. Can you unmute? Marva is so kind. She makes me dinner. And I just swing by after work because of COVID. We can't see each other. But she just puts it on her porch and I go home with dinner. It's so amazing. Wow. I see your beautiful face at the window. <laughs> <laughs> How nice. That's so okay. Um, it's been five again. days, Marva. I can't believe it. Okay. okay. Oh my gosh, Laura, I'm so excited. I just wanted to tell you, thank you. This journey for the writing the book has been phenomenal. Um, I've been asked to teach. I've been going to, believe it or not, universities. I've been going to different places that, you know, most people have not been able to get into. And so it's been wonderful. I've been asked to write another book on a different kind of a subject. And so I'm doing that. And then the other thing is we've been traveling with our grandkids. We went different places they wanted to go then Israel which is somewhere I've always wanted to go mm -hmm. and since my actual career is a financial analyst and people didn't know that until me writing the book and me them knowing now that I'm able to help get people out of debt complimentary it's shocking I mean it's it's just wonderful so I love it thank you awesome I'm so proud of you thank you yes going to Israel wow Okay, Donna. Okay, well, I'm so, I just love how God connects the dots, Lori, and how we met in school all those years ago and how he kept our, our past connected for such a time as this because I'm actually working on my second book and I just um, love that I stayed in connection with Monona, Jennifer, Colleen, Tracy, Lisa, and Marvin. I've read all of their books, which have been inspiring me to write my second book. I've been able to finish up my full-time job as a social worker and doing full-time jail ministry and my books have touched the hearts of women because it's about the broken relationships that they have with their children and how they can so be restored and I'm encouraging them to write their own stories whether they want to publish it or not write 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 because their hearts are just filled with they're just walking vessels of stories and then able to travel and help with my grandchildren and just the freedom that this has opened up in my life and work on my network marketing business. I just love it. I just love it. And I love how we've all stayed connected. Oh, so good to see you. I'm so proud of you starting your second book. Second book. I know it's not as hard as I thought it was either. You just start writing and the words just come. Right. <laughs> love my editor. He's my best friend. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Let's give each other a hand, you guys. Nice work. So, uh, 18 to 20, no, Winona, did you want to say something or were you saying goodbye? No, I was waving because I'm about to start driving here in three minutes, but I'm listening. What's your big takeaway so, so you don't have to do it while you're driving? What's your big takeaway of today? 
Um, the big takeaway for me is, first of all, what you said was about having that inner circle of support of people that are my cheerleaders. And then the um, second piece is, um, second thing is, it's really nice to be to a group of women that's doing a bunch of different stuff that can motivate me to, to do more. So I'm really, really excited to be with this group. And I can't wait to hear, to see you guys next week, to see how we have, um, see how far we've come, right? So we can talk about the next steps. Don't do that. Great. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's it. I'm in the car. Hey, let me share this with you right quick. So this is my best friend from Hi. Detroit. We've been best friends Hi. since Hello. I was 14 years old. So she is about mm -hmm. to do a recording for our some of our history. So you'll hear that really soon. And what's like, her name? What's her name, Winona? Her name is Marjorie. Hi, I'm Marjorie. Nice Hi. to meet you. Any friend of Winona's is a friend of mine. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's been wild. Trust me. It's been have... a wild ride. We're still together. <laughs> so I imagine you're going to be on one of her podcasts. Yeah. Yes, yes, I am. Awesome. Yes, I can't wait. Good. We'll, we'll give you All the... Right. We'll give you the link when Winona finally posts them because you can turn your book oh, yeah. into a podcast, which is amazing. And oh, yeah. people are making big bucks on podcasts right now. Uh, there's platforms that people donate. You can also pitch. I've got a pitching letter. You go to com you like coffee, go to a coffee company. You like shoes, go to a shoe company. It's just amazing how you can get support for the podcast and having a book is like the best business card it's like you know you've already done something so let's uh big takeaways before we say goodbye and any questions right well this is gonna be a new adventure so this is gonna be real exciting she's been doing this book for a long time so I love it. this like, is gonna I be good right i can't out. wait <laughs> pull it right back out. nice all right i'm just gonna put us on i'm gonna listen now okay Okay, who's next? Big takeaway or questions? Oh, wait, we got to check Jen's chat. <laughs> Let's see, did she write her big thing? No. I just want to read everybody's book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see what everybody has to say. I know, won't that be fun? And we could just trade them all around and I love it. Any other big takeaways? I've got a big takeaway. Yes, Colleen. Um, I just think um, hearing everybody's stories, the women are just fantastic. And I think just getting um, all the connections and all of us seem to have um, very different stories, which is really great. And we all seem to have a different kind of, I wouldn't, just limiting belief of what our kind of fear was of not knowing so it's like it's going to be nice to see each of us evolve um in going through this process with you as you help us go through each phase as um you know we weren't sure about this or this or this and as we all learn from you and go through each part um it's going to help all of us really it's not like all of us have the same part that we need to learn we all need to learn all the way through which is going to be like um, gold for all of us. So I'm really excited and it'll be fun to be able to read each other's books in the end. So I'm really excited. So thank you. Love that. Thank you. Anybody else a takeaway or a question? Just do it. Costa Rica real quick. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, I'm going to just show y'all a, a quick, uh, Quick squeeze of Costa Rica. Wow, gorgeous. I got to come see you, Jen. Yeah, you do, girl. That's why I showed you. <laughs> <laughs> Been too long. <laughs> we got room for you. I love it. I got to watch the Razor Girls. They're amazing. Okay, Lisa, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say so Tracy said just do it, and I'd say thumbs up to that. And instead of me saying, I will write each morning for a little bit of time when, with my coffee. Instead of saying, I will, I'm going to say, I am writing a little bit in the morning with my coffee. Nice. Mm -hmm. So no more I will, I am. Get rid of that will. You are. 
you're you're kicking it. Anybody else? Okay, if you think of something, let me know. But there's something I want to close with is see if I can find it. I wanted to, um, uh, you know, it's really easy to uh, think when people comment that, you know, so give them a generous assumption. So if somebody says something that feels like, ow, give them a generous assumption that they're coming from someplace. Like even with a text, sometimes you get a text and you're like, that was mean when it was, it was a text and the, you know, like sometimes if I'm on the radio, I'm like, yes, no, whatever. And one, one of my clients, I always give him a thumbs up and he goes, wow, you really like the thumbs up, don't you? And I'm like, you know, give people a generous assumption. And so every day you're going to start with gratitude. And there's kind of the way I do it is I think of this circle, which is my family, my grandkids. And then I move out to my friends my uh, actually friends are in the first one then the clients that i serve i pray for them i'm thankful i try to uh, uh this gen as if it's already happened so i pray for them as if they've already done the thing they want to do and then even out to the bigger circle which is costa rica you know the beauty around us and so start with gratitude start with some kind of devotional uh some people read the Bible, some people there's motivational books that I love. And then try to take five minutes, that's 10, <clears throat> five minutes of just quiet. And it's really hard if you're not used to it, but just be quiet and see what you hear. And if a thought comes in, oh, I gotta do the dishes. Thank you, I'll do the dishes when I'm done. You know, accept it, lean into it and let it go. Don't fight it. So. You're gonna start with gratitude. You're gonna start with some sort of motivational thing. It could be a video, whatever. And then um, five minutes of just quiet and see what comes in. I know Lisa's doing that and she's gotten some really awesome ideas uh, just from taking a little bit of quiet time. And thank you all for being on this call. I believe in you. I know that you've got this. And the limiting beliefs just I call it the gremlin on the shoulder. Who are you to think you could write a book? Who are you to think anyone to listen? Just flick him right off because that is the enemy. Whatever you believe, there's always an enemy of, of good. So when you want to put yourself out there, when you want to help people, there's a force that doesn't want you to. So right. let's get rid of that force and let's help as many people as we can. Yep. It's good. All right. Any last words before we go? I have something based off of what Lisa said, um, I just really felt impressed on, you know what, we have three different voices. We have the passive voice, we have the active voice, and we have the future voice. And I've always been really good at either talking in the passive or the future. I need to stay in the active and talk in the active. I love that. That's like stay in the moment. Um, one yeah. of my friends wrote a song. Let's see, I don't think any of you know her. Um, she, she came to me for coaching. Um, she wanted to be a worldwide singer, which she did. She wrote music, sang, but then she was like, you know what? I'd rather be a speaker. So now she's a speaker trainer. But she wrote a song called, uh, I always had a coaching thing I called Dancing in the Moment, which means staying in the moment. So she wrote a song and it's like, let's dance in this moment. Let's relish in this what's happening now and keep ourselves motivated, stay in gratitude and keep this going because this is something we have to offer the world. And I believe the world's waiting. And it's like, we're each, each a piece of that puzzle. You know, we don't want your piece to be missing when we're done with the puzzle. I don't want my piece to be missing. So, so 18 to 24 things you want people to know. I want you to do that this week. If you get that done and you want the next step, you can, however you contact me, contact me, I'll give it to you because some people are a little farther along in the journey. So uh, wherever you are. Also, Marva has a podcast. Once uh, we start the Facebook page, you can check out her, her podcast. And um, Jen does a blog. I don't know if you've done anything recently, but she does a kind of a, <laughs> I've been kicking her butt on that one, but that's okay. And um, just know whatever comes up. Oh, I don't know about this. Go, oh, Lori promised me it's not going to matter. Okay. And if you can trust the process, you will be so pleasantly surprised. So thank you all for being here. I'll see you same time, same place next Monday.
Thank you, Lori. Bye, Bye. Bye. Thank you, Lori. Bye, all. It was nice to meet everyone. Thank you, Thank you, you everyone. Thank Bye. you, Lori. Yeah. Thanks, God bless Lori. you guys. God bless you all. Bye. God bless. Bye. God bless. Take care. Bye. Yeah.